How do you see the 2020s playing out in relation to the rest of this century? Do you have recommendations for families and churches particular to this decade? So uh, one of the things that I've seen a lot of conservative Christians doing as things have gotten increasingly insane is saying things like, surely now everybody will wake up and see that this is absurd. Mm -hmm. um, so right when, um, when we're recording this, we're right in the midst of canceling Dr. Seuss. Okay. <laughs> Right. Okay. Surely that's going to do it. Everybody's going to um, wake up and say, this is beyond, this is absurd. This is lunatic. Um, and, uh, and I've given up saying that, you know, with surely now everybody's going to see the light. Now, having said, having given up saying that, that doesn't mean that that won't happen. Mm -hmm. It just means that people can probably go for longer than you would guess mm -hmm. in in doubling down, tripling down on uh, their folly. But as uh, there's uh, Stein's Law, um, I think the gent's name, an economist named Herbert, I think his name is Herbert Stein. Basically, he's, he said, anything that cannot continue on indefinitely won't. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. And I believe to use a buzzword from our um, our current eco culture the crazy that's going on right now is not sustainable people right. people cannot live this way uh, there's going to be uh, either a revolt against it right and a, a, a revolt back to normalcy mm -hmm. or uh, the people who are doing all this crazy are are simply doing it as a means of getting control right mm -hmm. and then once they have that control then they can um, then they can back off a little bit, have, uh, having gotten all the levers of control. Bas basically, um, cancel culture is not rampaging through North Korea right now. Mm -hmm. Right? They just have an iron uh, iron grip on the country, and they you do what you tell them, and your freedoms are gone. Mm -hmm. But they're not doing. It's not a. Um, it's a totalitarian society, but it's not a loony bin. Mm -hmm. Okay, right now we're dealing with the loony bin. Um, the inmates are running the asylum. And, and, the, and this, that's because we're living in a transitional moment. Uh, political correctness, cancel culture and political correctness are all um, designed to be absurd. Right. So, right. right. It's, the issue is not, uh, we, we shouldn't be thinking of the leftists who are uh, demanding that we feel guilty for you know, um, whiteness or, you know, whatever it is, right. whatever it is, um, or the Coca-Cola try to be less white. Mm -hmm. Um, or you, you read Dr. Seuss, you read the Sneetches book to your kids. And so you're guilty of a hate crime. They're not, the people who are yelling at us about those things are serious, but they're not serious about the point they're making. The, what they're doing is they are saying things that are absurd. They know that they're absurd. Mm -hmm. And the issue is, can they get you to go along with the absurdity? Mm -hmm. Because if you go along with the absurd demands that they're making, then that is demonstrating that they have complete control over you. So if, if, they, if someone comes along and says, I want you to say the sky is pink. Mm -hmm. And I say, no, no. Um, they, and they start demanding and start, or organize a riot and start doing all this stuff. The issue is not, I don't have to say, why does he really think, why does he think the sky is pink? He doesn't think this, he doesn't think the sky is pink. He thinks you're a coward. Right. <laughs> okay. So that's the issue. Uh -huh. So we, th we think that um, the issue is about uh, trannies, mm -hmm. you know, uh, uh, guys running and women's uh mediocre males competing in women's sports. We think that that's the issue. And we think we're debating with someone who actually thinks that these guys are girls. Mm -hmm. We're not debating with people who think that guys are girls. We're debating with people who think that you're a girl. Right. So, so it seems like it, it's this conflict between you've got a, um, you've got a society that is governed by the reality of what God has actually revealed natural law, uh, and, and the and the law that he has his revealed word, or you've got a society that's governed by 
as it, is it the lust of man? Is that is that what is the 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 power is shifting towards? What's at the top when uh, that transition happens? So is um, Augustine? I think it was Augustine's phrase for it was libido dominandi, uh, the lust to govern, mm -hmm. and it's uh, you see it in Milton's Satan who would rather rule in hell than serve in heaven. Mm. Okay, there are people who would rather govern a helicopter crash of a country mm -hmm. than serve in a happy, prosperous uh, nation where they didn't get to run anybody. So the trick is then that, that when you run into these absurd conversations, we keep thinking that they're trying to convince us of this other truth that seems ridiculous. But in actuality, what they're trying to convince us of is their right to be the one who declares what is true. Correct. No and they want, me, they want me to acknowledge that they are in that uh, definitional place. Mm -hmm. So I've said it for a number of years. I said, all of this is battle, uh, is, is a battle over control of the dictionary. Mm -hmm. Who has control of the dictionary? Who is the editor of the dictionary? And I'm not arguing with their definition of X, Y, Z. I'm arguing with their right to define anything. And so. that's, that's why, so one minute race means one thing, the next minute something else or gender or sex. And it, it, it keeps changing on us, not because they're trying to get us to a particular truth, but because they're trying to establish and, their yes, own. And this is, the, uh, this, is the truth, this is the truth that Orwell pointed to. We've always been at war with East Asia. Um, right. and, and so I, uh, I can guarantee you that uh, when after, after all the soft Christians have capitulated and say, yes, trannies are women. Yes, mm -hmm. trannies are women. Trannies are women. And they're in the driver's seat. They're going to come back to us 15 minutes later and say, now, uh, we, we, we want you to deny that trannies are women. And, and they're going to get compliance because mm -hmm. you were already broken. Mm -hmm. uh, you were broken on this, uh, on this point. The issue is them breaking you, not them saying uh, two plus two equals five. So, so then back to the question that started this, uh, do you have recommendations for families and churches, particularly to this decade? If, if, if that's the world we're looking at, then to steal from Schaefer, how do we then live? Right. Well, I, I'll, I'll put it this way. I, I believe that Christians, Christian fathers, husbands, pastors um, uh, need to be looking for a hill to defend. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and that, that might mean relocating. That might mean changing churches. That might mean crossing the, sta the state line. Mm -hmm. You know, if you could move down the road out of Illinois and into Indiana, might that be a good idea? Yeah, that might be a, uh, a good idea. We are living in a time of massive relocation. This is happening whether I advise it or not. Mm -hmm. Um, if you want to rent a U-Haul, last I, I checked this a few months ago, but and I think it's probably the same now, if not worse. If you want to rent a U-Haul to from Portland to Boise, okay, from Portland to Boise, it costs about nine hundred dollars. If you want to rent a U-Haul to go from uh, to like a truck or a trailer from Boise to Portland, it costs about ninety dollars, <laughs> right? And that's because Seattle, Portland, L.A are emptying out, mm -hmm. right? Uh, businesses are fleeing like crazy. Idaho is currently the number one destination state for this massive shuffle. Mm -hmm. and, we're, and we're experiencing that here in Moscow where numerous Christian families have, have uh, flooded in, have come in, and which uh, A, they're refugees, and B, they're reinforcements. Mm -hmm. the, the, um, because they're going to make our position here much more defensible. And I think that this spring and summer when school lets out and Biden's um, policies start to um, take hold, we're going to see a lot more of that. Other parts of the country are going to see a lot more of it as well. I would say places like Illinois, California, New York, Massachusetts are going to, are going to see Christians leaving with their businesses mm -hmm. um, because for, in some cases their business is going to, you know, I may, you know, if, if I do weapons, uh, anything with weapons, I, I better get right. to a place where I can still feed my family and not be um, regulated to death or outlawed or, you know, anything like that. Mm -hmm. So I would encourage people not to lurch. Don't just 
jump and land anywhere. Mm-hmm. Research, do your due diligence, check it out, and have a church that uh, find a church with a spine first. Right. That, that's a, find a church with a spine with like minded people who that you can associate uh, with, uh, so you can defend something in common. So. Um... Oh, can I just go back a little bit and um, and re ask the question as if you hadn't already answered it? Like, so then, how can you still be post mill? Um, mm-hmm. I mean, because because it is it is interesting. You're describing what sounds like a retreat. A lot of people, you know, get out of there, run away. Um, so, and and post millennialism is supposed to be this sort of ambitious, advancing kind of uh, gospel that's, that's taking ground, not giving up ground. So, so how do you reconcile uh, okay. those two? So, there was a Marine general in the Korean War, I think, don't remember his name, who said, basically, we're not retreating, we're advancing to the rear. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> okay, um, but just aside from redefining things, the, if if you think post millennialism is the kingdom of God taking off like the space shuttle, mm-hmm. and every second you're, you know. Uh, 500 yards farther yeah. toward, you know, mm-hmm. closer to the heavens, uh, then, yeah, this this would be a discouraging time to be that kind of post-millennialist. But if you believe that post-millennialism is more like walking up the side of the eastern range of the Rocky Mountains, starting, mm-hmm. in, the, starting in Nebraska, mm-hmm. okay, and you're, you're going up into the foothill, foothills and you go up and then you go down, and then you go up some more, and then you go down, and then when you start to get to the mountains proper, you're going down crevices, and then up a rock face, and then up a slope, and then down into a canyon. Yes, yeah. uh, the advance of the kingdom of God is like that. Mm-hmm. Okay, so uh, Herbert Schlossberg, who wrote, um, uh, if you haven't read Idols for Destruction, I would encourage you to do so. Uh, and if you've read it before, twenty years ago, I'd advise you to read it again. It's a magnificent book. Uh, Schlossberg said that uh, the kingdom of God, this is my paraphrase, the kingdom of God advances from triumph to triumph with all of them cleverly disguised as disasters. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I think that that's how Christians ought to think. What was the, what was the day, what was the worst day uh, according to the disciples, the followers of God in the history of the kingdom of God? Well, it would have had to have been the crucifixion. Right. Uh, if you want to look at discouraged people, it's disciples in the upper room, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, and yet that was the day the devil was defeated. That was the day when all our sins were forgiven. That was the day when uh, if the rulers of this age had known what they were doing, mm-hmm. they would not have crucified the Lord of glory, as Paul says in Corinthians. So I think we need to understand that uh, disasters are disasters from our vantage point, but not from God's. Okay. Well, okay. So if that's the case, then we're, we're going through definitely at at the very least something that's been cleverly disguised as a disaster Mm -hmm. um, and things are falling all apart. But if we're to take an optimistic view of it, then that means that in the midst of all of this, that there's actually um, a blessing and a gift being given to us. And we're we're being given an opportunity to make a great uh, advance so if you if you had to address the Christian church and just say, okay, here's the thing that we did not have right over the last, say, 100 years, and mm-hmm. we're now being put in a position where we have the chance to actually address this and, and get this right mm-hmm. so that we can make that next mountain climb, are there certain things you would say, this is what we need to be digging in on? I would say for um, one of the most Christianized... Uh, I'll, Um, There are Christian areas of the world, like Africa, for example, Mm -hmm. but a lot of the Christianity there is full of beans and very, very young and just arrived. But in terms of established Christianity with institutions and deep roots and available resources and everything, North America is is incredibly wealthy when it comes to Mm -hmm. our our, uh, resources, okay? Um, And I would say if there – if someone says, okay – uh, we just got our butts kicked in the first half of that football game, and I'm giving the coaches exhortation right. in, in halftime. Right? What um, what positions do we have to reinforce? What do we have to fix? Mm-hmm. What, what do we have to get right for the second half? And I would say eschatology is the big long term um, 
thing. The point, guys, is to win the game. <laughs> right. right. That, that, so that's a long term. We want more points on the scoreboard at the end. Uh, that would be eschatology. I would say the, but the the more immediate, like what pl- what are the first three plays we're going to call? What do we need to do mm-hmm. uh, in the third quarter? I think we need to be done with the charade of secularism. Mm. Uh, b- basically, that's the thing that has crippled. Uh, we have a we have a nation with millions of Christians mm-hmm. in it, millions of Christians, and and yet we're uh, Roe v. Wade, and yet Obergefell, and yet all yeah. these tra- tra- uh, drag queen library ladies, and so how can you have millions of Christians and this stuff going on? Well, it's because those millions of Christians have been co opted by the idea that the public square is something that is a place they have no right to be. Right. All right. You, you, well, you can go over there because you're a citizen, but you have to leave your Christianity back in your your own home or at your church. Mm-hmm. When you come in the public square, you've got to act like some neutral being. Mm-hmm. And it's that secularism that has got us uh, hogtied. And, and and we need to be unembarrassed about saying, no, 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 you can't chop babies up anymore because Jesus told us we couldn't. Mm-hmm. Moses told us we couldn't, and Jesus agrees. And, and then Moses and Jesus, and we, yeah. we, no, you're trying to impose your morality. And you, yeah, exactly. Exactly. But but there's a, it's not just, yeah, swallow the reductio. It's, yes, I want to impose my morality on this, mm-hmm. um, in this abortion case, but everybody wants to impose their morality. Mm-hmm. I, I want to impose Christian morality on the abortionist and on the mother, and the abortionist and the mother want to impose their morality on the child. Mm-hmm. But at the end of the day, someone is going to impose their morality on someone. That That is not optional. That's mm-hmm. always going to be the case. So being a Christian, I think the, um, the Christian morality ought to be the one imposed and not the bloodlust pagan morality being mm-hmm. imposed. So, uh, so, and you can't argue the way I'm arguing illegally just right, right, right now. You can't argue that way unless you're prepared to attack secularism, not as a grand virtue, but as a, an empty, hollow idol.